Hi everyone, it's Mark here again. I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network and we're currently at around 78,000 members across our four LinkedIn groups. I like to drop that number in when I record a, an interview so we can keep track on it. But this is the, the best fun of the job for me. This is where I get to meet some of our full members, um, learn what gets them up in the morning, hear the backstory and play a few games. So I'm delighted that Donna Lewis has, has joined me. Donna, thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Um, and you're in DC, aren't you? Yep, Washington, Washington DC. DC. Mm -hmm. The power, the power center of the world. One, one could argue. Yeah. It feels like the power center. I mean, I think, I think you can feel the power. It yeah. might be because I live pretty much right around the corner from the vice president. So That's I really, I really. I walk out of my house and I really do see monuments pretty fast within a couple blocks. It's great. So um, it feels like a powerful place to me. I, I visited when I was in the city of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra in the percussion section and we were on tour and we did a, a tour of, of North America and we um, Washington was on the list. I got to play the triangle in Carnegie Hall in New York as well, which was great. <laughs> <laughs> now Actually, did you all wear the same t-shirt what color was it no i was in i was in a um, your full band tails. uniform i was in tails tail coat white tie and tails yeah wow um it was actually one of the funny things I often tell people is, um, and not a lot of people realize that the triangle player gets paid more than the violinists in an orchestra which is a surprise but yes because there's only one triangle and it's considered a principal part so the musicians union decided that you should get paid more so you could be in there and just go ting -a ling a ling a couple of times and you get paid more than somebody at the back of the, the violins um for, for the evening but there you go how is the supply and demand though yeah and you can always hear a triangle it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing in the orchestra you'll always hear the triangle so anyway yeah. i okay. digress i digress okay. So please tell us the Donna story. I've been we've had a little chat to warm ourselves up for this interview, and there's some fan fascinating things in your background. And I really want to hear more about the transition that you're making from working for the U.S. government in various roles, um, the disability issues that you've um, you've been managing and and working in that area, and the legal profession. And and I, I know that you're adding to your adding a string to your bow now with your art and your writing. So give us a little bit of a um, a, a brief sort of backstory, Donna, if you wouldn't mind, because it's always fascinating for those who watch our videos. Um, and when when we see the work as well is to is to have a sense of where did this come from? So um, I know you've got cartoons syndicated all over the place. There's some wonderful Art that I will have a look at it in at the moment and some fascinating writing. So sh share, share the Donna story briefly, if you wouldn't mind. I don't know if I can sound that fascinating, <laughs> but I'll I'll try to to make it all make sense or a little bit of sense. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I'm here, here in Washington, D.C. I grew up in Baltimore, which is less than an hour away. And so we used to come here all the time. And um, I was actually uh, a page, a Capitol congressional page in Washington. Uh, you reminded me when you were talking about coming here with your band to play. I actually graduated from, <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. I went to the Capitol page school and I had a graduation ceremony with Jimmy Carter uh, in the White House. And so Jimmy Carter handed me a certificate in the White House. So uh, I, it may have been when you were there, who knows. Uh, but living in Washington is very exciting. It really is. Anyway, um, after uh, law school, I uh, uh, you can cut that, right? No. <laughs> uh, yes you can you can cut that right <laughs> yeah let's do another little pause I'll find it and we'll drop it in okay okay all right that's uh I have a medication thing that uh makes it hard to find words if okay. you decide to, if you decide to keep this in the video that's what I'm writing about I'm writing about oh. what happens when you lose the ability to talk now uh, something similar happened to me I had a TIA 
Um, ah, then you would understand what yeah, I'm going it was, through. I think we might leave this in because this might help people. You, um, I, this is the part that's interesting. I well, mean, exactly. Yeah, I like, was, yeah. I, I, my vision, my peripheral vision disappeared on the right hand side. I was trying to read some notes that I had read that morning and it was like trying to decipher a foreign language. Um, I could see the letters, but I couldn't make them into words or sentences. It only lasted an hour. I was very lucky. Um, but it was a, a transient ischemic attack, which is like a temporary stroke. Um, so that's that's my experience of that. But I I, I, I sympathise, if not empathise entirely. So, but if you want to talk some more about that, that's exactly the sort of thing that 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 makes us all different and interesting. So we probably that's won't exactly that. the stuff that I want to talk about. And I <laughs> I broke down in tears in a very, very expensive restaurant last week because I was there with my writing group and uh, the waitress came over to take an order and I none of us had looked at the menu yet. So I looked at the menu and all I could see was a very swirly font that was all in French with no prices. And I just started crying because I couldn't read it. And so it's very similar to what you're talking about. My brain, it's not that my brain shuts down. It's that it delays. It, it delays. And then I have to stop because no words come to my mouth. And it's a it's a result of just some some treatment that I've been through and some medication that I'm taking that I'm adjusting to and I'm used to it and it's part of my disability story. And I would love to tell my disability story. But first let me get back to how I ended up as here or there or wherever it is that I am. I'm not quite sure where I am to be quite honest. <laughs> So uh, I know I that you mentioned with... you mentioned that the uh, sort of the um the, was it, were you, were, you, were you working as a lawyer um in DC was that um, yeah so after college after college I came back to uh the the DC area and I was working as a, a litigator in the private sector uh, on disability issues and those involved a lot of employment issues and in the in in the <laughs> in the process of handling those cases, um, I was actually introduced to a lot of management lawyers, um, and I was actually hired onto a company uh, as a corporate counsel for that company. So I really got more deeply into management issues on the disability side or disability issues on the management side, depending on how you look at it. And um, so I ended up doing that for a while. And then 9-11 happened. And when 9-11 happened, I really felt the call uh, to go into government because I'm surrounded by government here. Right now, I'm within a mile of government. So um, where I'm sitting, where I live. And so um, I really felt like I needed to do something for our country. So I actually went to work as a contractor for the Department of Homeland Security doing disability issues. And then I was hired full-time at the Department of Homeland Security. Um, I started off doing disability issues and then continued doing civil rights issues. And I only recently in the last couple of years switched to the FAA, the Federal, Administ uh, Federal Aviation Administration. Uh, that's a good drinking game. Of course, I don't drink. Sometimes I drink and play that game, Federal Aviation Administration. <laughs> Maybe don't tell the FAA. That's what I do in my spare time. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, that's a commercial for the FAA. There we uh, go. Don't drink and drive an airplane. That's no, absolutely advice. not. Do not drink and drive an airplane. Okay. Anyway, uh, where was I? Um, so now I'm at the FAA. Uh, doing civil rights issues, and I have a syndicated cartoon, uh, actually two. I have a syndicated comic strip and a king syndicated one panel cartoon, and um, I'm working on my writing. Uh, I love that. Um, and I know that your your focus is moving 
towards this this creative um path yeah. that you have which is just fantastic and there's a kind of m magical combination your your life experiences the challenges that you've faced and overcome the 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 way that that must be inspiring and uh the work the the, the art that you create um and the issues that the cartoons might address so i, I that's a, it's lovely to to understand that backstory it really is and and um congratulations because the end result is beautiful work i mean it's fantastic shall we have a look at it um i'm going to share the screen just briefly um and then perhaps you'd be kind enough to talk us through some of the work um that that you've done so this i'm 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 actually quite excited that i'm actually seeing the originals of these behind you yeah 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 <laughs> well behind me are actually not the originals behind me are just the prints um okay. but, uh, these are my suicide girls and i really try not to use i i go back and forth about tr using the word suicide because it makes people so uncomfortable but the reason I'm using it now is because I'm writing about it and I'm writing about that issue specifically. I'm writing about, I'm writing about the connection between people having trouble talking about suicide and the effect that it has on the ability to get treatment. I have recently in the past year gotten the treatment that's completely changing my life. I, I, no longer for now everything is always everything for every person on the face of the earth is for now today i'm i'm in the dark again oops um but for now i have no suicidal thoughts and i've had no suicidal thoughts now for the last several months and i had never ever experienced that and it's, I don't even know what the word is. It's beyond amazing. I had never experienced it. I had never experienced having a head that can just hear nothing. Mm. And it's just a, a quiet mind. And it's amazing. And I understand very well why people cannot tolerate the pain of whatever condition they have. Mm. Because, <laughs> whoops, I need to fix my website. Whoops. Um, because um, the pain becomes intolerable. The, the pain becomes intolerable and the isolation becomes intolerable. But the thing is you need to have the isolation to deal with the pain and it's really impossible to explain that to people. And the reason I am going to write about suicide is because nobody heard me. They were talking to me and they were saying they heard me, but they didn't hear me. And the reason it ended up hurting me was not only because my life was a horrible quality of life, a really tormenting quality of life, but also because I could have received this treatment, the treatment that I have had over the past year, I could have had this 10 years ago. And is that talking therapy or is it medication or is it a combination of, of the two? The therapy that made the difference is transcranial magnetic stimulation. Ooh. TMS. It's TMS. being used for a multitude of things, including PTSD, which so many people have to begin with. And now so many people have after COVID, so many people were traumatized by the sudden change to their lives during COVID. People are really experiencing a lot of pain right now. And TMS changed my life. Um, I don't want to talk like a preacher in this, but I urge people to check out TMS. And there's a lot of information about it on my site. And I urge you to 
listen to something new. Stop listening with all due respect. Stop listening to your doctor, especially if you've had your doctor for over a couple of years. Stop listening to your family, especially if you've had your family for over a couple of years. If you've had your family for over a couple of years, you need to really get some new family because your family is so limited in what they need, in what they know, in what they know and what they know how to do. And the worst thing about your family is that they love you too much. They love you too much to take any chances on you. So they're not going to try new things where you're involved. And then the most worst thing about your family, besides the fact that they're completely annoying, if they're anything like my family, the <laughs> worst thing about your family is that they're so scared to do anything that might make you worse that they don't try anything new. Mm. And when you are in so much pain and you only want to die, what you need to try is anything new, anything new, anything new. And that's what I did. And now I have no suicidal thoughts. That's, that's so reassuring to hear your story, Donna, in that respect, because there must be people... There will be people in our network. I mean, with 77,000 people, there will be people with, with similar challenges and similar um, anguish, you know. Um, so thank you so much for, for sharing that because um, it, it might you, you just never know who that might help in the future. So thank you for that. Um, to lighten the mood somewhat, and I and I know you're writing about this. <laughs> oh, and by the fantastic. and by the way, read my really fun cartoons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the cartoons are not about suicide. Here we go. Let's have a look then. Here we go. Let's have a look at the cartoons. Oh um, my God! Please only look at the funny ones. I just put that up. That's why it has no likes or anything. <laughs> I, I can't believe you got me awake and out of bed early. You owe me for this. You owe me big. You waking up. You waking up issues are not fun at all. Your waking up issues are not fun at all. But look how great I did. Now give me positive feedback. Good going, witchy woman. See how high you fly. <laughs> these are great. And where do these, and you mentioned these are syndicated. So where where do, where do the people you can, find? I'll, you can go to arkamax.com. You can go to the Washington Post. I can give a plug for my local newspaper. There we go. Uh, I'm syndicated by the Washington Post. That's, that's I can give, that's I can give Jeff, my good friend Jeff B, uh, <laughs> a plug. Hi Jeff, thank you for giving me money for my cartoon. There we go. That's uh, we were talking about me playing the triangle at Carnegie Hall and feeling as though I peaked as a percussionist. Being syndicated by the Washington Post is an incredible achievement. I think that's brilliant. I, Excellent. I, I love it. <laughs> so now the fun part, which I've, I've given you absolutely no warning about, um, for which I apologize. But just I, I found that doing these little kind of quizzes is is a real eye opener for people who haven't uh -oh. had the pleasure of meeting you as I now have. Okay. So when we publish this and promote it, if uh, if you if you connect with when you connect with other members of the network, if they've watched it, they'll feel as though um, they've got to know you a little. Um, I've just posted I have one. some memory issues, so that's fine. Don't worry, you're in safe hands. <laughs> I'll lead the way. It really I might have to matter. make up an answer. You can, but there is a get out clause. You have oh, okay. What? If, if you don't want to answer the question, you can throw it back at me and say, Mark, you answer that one okay. um, if if you want. But I think you'll find it fine. Now, okay. and this one's really, the first one is going to be interesting given where you live, okay? Oh. So- Don't ask, ask me you, who the president is. I can't remember his name. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite building? Oh, boy, I'm, I wrote about this too. I was a congressional page and every day, every morning at 6 a.m., we went to, to school, to high school at the second floor of the Library of Congress. So it's the Library of Congress and every year, and I would like you to be my date next year. I'm going to invite you to be my date at the um, Herblock Awards. The Herblock Awards are the uh, award, this is where my memory is going to lapse, the uh, awards for the Herblock Prize for editorial cartooning. 
this has been such a traumatic time for editorial cartoonists. And I am absolutely a proponent of free speech, even if that speech is hurtful or bad or painful or really bad. And so I went to high school. My last year of high school was in the Library of Congress, second floor. You, everybody must see that building. And if you come to DC, look me up. I will give you a private tour. It will not be informative at all, but it might be fun. And we can take fun photos on the steps. Perfect. You can have the Library of Congress. That's that's okay. excellent. That's a great one. I haven't had that one before. It's always good. Okay. Now, do you have a, a, a favorite book or a book that you reread? As an adult? Uh, either as an adult or as a child? As a child, it was my illustrated Bible because the pictures were so beautiful and because the stories were more real because the stories were kind of stupid when I was little. Um, they weren't real stories, like what was going on in school and what was going, I was I was suicidal as a child and we didn't have the good books that, they, now we have good books for children because now they're writing good books for children. But um, when I was real little, Judy Bloom hadn't even written her books yet, but when I was real little and I was suicidal. Um, so, you know, that Bible, the illustrated Bible was beautiful. And after the Bible, it was, um, uh, I'm going to have trouble with the name of it. I'll remember the name. Yeah, it'll come, it'll come to you. Yeah. you can scribble yeah. it down. And To Kill okay. a Mockingbird. To Kill, Kill a Mockingbird. That, uh, that's a, uh, that's a production in, in London at the moment, and it's doing so well. It's had some fantastic reviews as a play. So, Okay. So we've got the Library of Congress and we've got To Kill a Mockingbird and we've got the Illustrated Bible. This is, you see, this is this is painting a picture of you in a way that we we, we can't normally. Now, this one's quite a challenge. Um, I want you to assume that you've been exiled from the United States for some unknown misdemeanor. <laughs> and you can it choose- It happen today. <laughs> yeah. um, but you can choose where you're, which country you're going to live in based on your perception of its culture. So where are you going? Sweden. Sweden. Nice. You'll pay a lot of tax in Sweden, but... Um, I live in Washington, D.C. I don't even have an extra dollar. <laughs> I mean, basically, I live in a great place on my sofa for free <laughs> i don't <laughs> spend money if i stay on my sofa so washington okay. is very expensive you can go but to sweden they're very happy in sweden they are aren't, aren't they the really happy people they are they are happy i read recently i think vancouver keeps winning the best city to live in award um i, I mean i've already had i've already had the worst in my head so why not go where the people are the happiest in their lives? Yeah, and it. I read. I read recently that it that it's a kind of inverse rule that the 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 lower the GDP is in a country, the happier the country tends to be. It's bizarre. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm supporting um, a dance group in Kampala in um, Uganda, and. Um, there's about I think 12 of them in this dance group and the youngest four are homeless orphans and so it's it, but they and they did a performance for me on whatsapp on a video call and it, and the joy that just came through was amazing but they not I mean we're worried about the next client the next job the next car and they're worrying about food and roofs over their heads so um anyway I digress so um, now as a spectator or as a participant, do you have a favorite sport, Donna? I like everything. I love athletes. I just love athletes. I just love athletes. Athletes are amazing. I think athletes are just amazing. To work that hard at something you love, to work it so hard at something physical. I mean, I just think any sport is great yeah love that I do feel really sorry for those people who spent four years preparing for the 100 meters final um at the Olympic Games and then 
get full started and that's it you're off you don't even get a second chance for, you know zero you know, tolerance i don't you know wow 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 you know i had to get up in that courtroom and get humiliated nine out of ten times i mean i have a problem with whining after you've made your career choice if you choose to go to the Olympics, if you choose, if that's the lifestyle you choose, and I'll tell you where this comes from, and it's not going to be popular. <laughs> I'll just warn you now. But if you choose the lifestyle of going to the Olympics, then don't cry when you fall, because that's what life is about. My life has not been that fun um, because of my my brain. Um, I have OCD, by the way. I don't think I said what caused the suicidal thoughts. Okay. <laughs> there was well, a problem must... up there. There was a problem up there. It wasn't something <laughs> I was making up. It was OCD. It was constant uh suicide, constant um uh intrusive thoughts of violence and harm and mm. violent acts. And um, so it made me have very strong impulses to jump off a roof, jump in front of a train, do drive off the highway, really mm. bad stuff. But um, so I don't, so it wasn't fun, but um, it's funny for a cartoon to make fun of not making the jump the one time you need to make the, the one, the one day that you needed to make that jump. Yeah, you just, yeah. But I've that's done it ten thousand times. Story. Yeah, I've done it that's ten thousand times. Story of all our lives. That's all of our lives. That's yeah. all of our lives. That's all of our lives. So moving but, on. Um... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was about to tell you about cartoonists and what they say, but I won't. Uh, we shall do that. We can do that as a follow up. Um, so cartoonists don't like my view. Uh, this one's a little cruel. Um, okay. I'm going to limit you to one genre of music for the rest of your life. What would you choose to listen to? 80s. 1980s. Yeah. Brilliant. Love it. A lot of people go classical uh, or jazz. Or, 80s, or, Brit 80s British. 1980s British. Now, yes. hold on. Does alternative include all you European people? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 1980s pop music yeah yeah, yeah. Right. you can have that that's brilliant now do you have a favorite visual artist so many just i love looking at stuff i really just looking like i really just like looking at stuff my my head is so violent it's just really nice to look at things that are nice to look at. Mm. Okay. My, uh, the one... that sounds, I mean, that sounds stupid, but like I can't, but no, also no, no, no. I just can't think sound... of anything in particular that's over. You I could, mean, why I, don't you throw that one back say, at what me? Don't I, I mean, I know what I don't like, but everything else is so beautiful. I, I'll look at anything that's beautiful. You could throw that back at me if you wish. Okay, I throw it back. <laughs> um I think that there was I was reading a book by what's his name Barnes can't remember I'll find the details but and in the, in the center of the book it was I think the book was about uh, the the backstory of a painting called The Raft of the Medusa by Jericho and it's in the Louvre in Paris and it's enormous I mean, it, it's the size of a the size of the side of a house I mean it is so if you get up close to it as somebody's tone toenail is about that big you know and it i just could not understand how jericho and that's g-e-r-i-c-a-u-l-t um how jericho could do that because he's, he's got to be within arm's length to paint the painting but he can't really tell that close what he he'd have to walk about 100 yards that way to to see the the whole painting and it's a it's a group of sailors who've been shipwrecked and they're waving dis and you know, there are people who died on the rafters. It's, it's the most incredible uh, image, but it's 
it's not I mean it looks fantastic and it's and I find it really moving but what I find fascinating is the the logistics of painting it I don't know how somebody can do that when if you know you're painting a toenail up here and it's that big so well think well about past that. well think about the characterists the I, I I just came from the National Cartoonist Society uh, annual conference this past weekend um, in Jersey City. It was it was really fun, and um, we saw the Statue of Liberty from our window. It, oh. it, I've never seen the Statue of Liberty so close. Um, oh, wow. to my bedroom to the hotel window. Um, mm. it, it was, that was really that was cool. Um, but there were a lot of caricaturists there. And I have a lot of in here in Washington, D.C., there's caricaturists at every event in Washington, D.C. So I have a lot of uh, cartoonist friends and illustrator friends who do that, you know, for a living. And um, they sit for four hours sometimes in Washington, D.C. heat, like 100 degrees, drawing multiple characters in in hours without a break i mean a little break to get something to drink but i don't know how they do that physically i always wonder about that i mean yeah. painting any sort of art is a very physical undertaking it's like sports it's a very physical endeavor yeah, yeah. it's yeah, hard absolutely. to literally do some some types of um uh art yeah yeah okay so moving on do you have a favorite play or a musical? Did I tell you I have problems with my memory? Yes. Dance 10 looks three. Hmm? What's that from? Some of the people in your audience know what it is. You you didn't know it. Dance 10 looks three. That comes from the show. Oh, or... Um, memory problems um okay. it's not 42nd street <laughs> no the one about chorus line chorus line okay i wasn't far Loved away a chorus line huh i wasn't far off with 42nd street but chorus did, you see line. A cor did you see a chorus yeah. line yeah i love it Fantastic. oh boy dan dan my mother bought me a t-shirt that said dance 10 looks three if you have any chorus line fans they'll they'll, they'll know, know exactly okay that was a great that was a great t-shirt. Somebody should make that t-shirt. Yeah. Um it's probably already available on Etsy. You wait. <laughs> um what about a favorite movie? Breakfast at Tiffany's. Nice. I'm going to write that down and watch it again because I won't oh, If you watch something. it, let me know. I'll watch it too and then we can talk about it. Yeah. Okay. We could yeah. schedule a Zoom and have a watch. Well, you can do a watch party on ne on Netflix, can't you? I think we could do a watch party. Yeah. <laughs> I know almost I know almost every line by heart. I can I could sit and write the whole I'm, thing. I'm the same with um, as good as it gets with Jack Nicholson and Helen Hunt. I've got the I've got quite a few of the lines. You know, go sell I've crazy somewhere else. That. We're all yeah. I've, I've it, never seen that, and that's the favorite movie of so many people I know. So oh, it's it's a wonderful. I'm going to watch that. Yeah. I'll watch that. It's there are two lovely lines, um, and it's Jack Nicholson, you know, um, and he's a, a without giving the game away, he's an eccentric, um, reclusive writer, very successful writer, um, and he's he's clearly on the spectrum, um, socially inept, um, and when I think somebody knocked on his door and he said, "Go sell crazy somewhere else. We're all stocked up here." Um, which I loved. Um, but the one line I, I love, he, he he had to visit his agent and the receptionist at his um, literary agency, um, as he was getting into the elevator, said, um, please, before you go, you write women so well. How do you do that? And he said, I think of a man and I take away reason and accountability. And it, it just, it just, I mean, it, it, it was, and the, the, the whole movie is dotted with, with, with funny little lines like that. And it's, it's utterly, he's, he's politically incorrect. And, you know, no filter. <laughs> Brilliant. I, um, I, I will definitely watch that. I miss, 
I miss politically incorrect move. I miss banter. I miss banter. Yeah. I, I really somebody I, somebody I um, really do. I re I miss, I miss I think... flirting. <laughs> flirting. Yeah. There's no flirting but, anymore. No, there isn't. Um, what was it? That's, I was going that's to say. the place I would go to if I kick. That's where I should go if I get kicked out of America. Where are they still flirting? I would think they're probably flirting quite heavily in Buenos Aires. Then I'll um, go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still going to Sweden. And the last question in this segment is, um, apart from me, who was the last person to make you laugh? Oh, my dog. Your dog. <laughs> <laughs> She's so funny. <laughs> She's so funny. Mine's, mine's sitting there on my sofa in the office here. He's um <laughs> he's a bulldog shih tzu cross, um, so which cute. makes him a bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. What's his name? His name is Moji. Uh, uh, we would because my daughter um had a fear of dogs for many years, and when we said we were going to get a puppy to my other daughter. She said, well, you can only get it if you name it after uh, Gran and Granddad. So Gran was Maureen and Granddad was Jim. So he, be he became Moji. So there we go. Thank you so much for doing those questions. I hope that wasn't too much Thank of you. a trial. At it's some at some point in there, does it make clear that I have some trouble getting words? Yes. From here to here? Absolutely. I don't, I don't want people to think I'm... Um, uh, just no. weird no it's, i'm not just no. weird i'm no. recovering from some that's entirely understood and it, it, it's perfectly um it's clear don't worry oh, okay good because good. I, you've been funnier and more interesting than you have been weird so there oh we go. good very <laughs> good and now, you can finish read my writing with... at my website and you can see that I, I i write better than i talk isn't isn't that a line in some movie? I write better than yeah, I talk. Yeah, probably should be. Shouldn't it? <laughs> that should be right. like on my gravestone. Finish... <laughs> she wrote better than she talked. Yeah, um, I want to, on my gravestone. I want he was smart enough to realize he wasn't clever enough to find anything boring. That's what I'd like. <laughs> or permanently grounded. That would be another one. That's, um, that's, that's that's a good one. Yeah, you know what Spike Milligan. You should has. ask people that. What would be on your gravestone? That's a great one. Yeah. Right? Oh, and also you. ask them what what's their favorite flavor pop tart. But what do you guys have? Are you guys into pop tarts, or do you eat something different? Since you don't like sweet stuff that much. Uh, we, we, I think we used to have pop tarts in the 1970s, and they used to be rather questionably advertised with very young girls wearing makeup and high heels. It was really odd. Um, so I think I, I don't think um, the, the the great British public embraced them for that reason. But there you go. Um, right, let's do, let's finish off with the this or that game. I'm going to give you two options, and you have to choose one instinctively. It's quite fast paced. Okay. Right, let's, are you ready? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Tea or coffee? Coffee. Radio or TV? What does radio mean? As in uh, the radio in the car or a wireless radio or TV. Does it include like Sirius XM and stuff like that? Yeah. Does it include podcasts? No. Broadcast Where are the radio. podcasts? Are those an option? You can have a podcast if you'd rather have podcast than radio or TV. Oh, podcast. Um, high heels or trainers? Or YouTube. Y YouTube and podcasts. Okay. High heels or trainers? What are trainers? Sneakers. High heels. <laughs> Car or motorcycle? Unless they're hiking boots. Okay. Car or motorcycle? Ugh, car. Mo uh, comedy or horror? comedy concert hall or sports stadium that's a tie okay cat or dog sports stadium okay uh cats or dogs that's a tie okay test the water or jump in at the deep end jump in 
Uh, library or museum? Library. Beethoven or Mozart? Mozart. Shower or bath? Bath. 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 Yeah. Bath. <laughs> <laughs> are, are two nations separated by the same language? Um, cooking or being cooked for? Oh, being cooked for. Fiction or non-fiction? Non-fiction. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Start immediately or wait until the last minute? Start immediately. I'm the opposite and then, of and then leave And then leave 99% for the last minute. <laughs> um, you that. didn't have that option in there. Yeah. Science or history? Science. Um, see the future or change the past? Change the past. Red or white wine? Red. And finally, numbers or words? Numbers. No, words. No, oh, words. Words probably needs to be words as a as a writer <laughs> ocd so numbers in the in the past words in the future excellent there we go don't that's look that way that's the that's the recovered ocd answer fantastic don't look backwards <laughs> you're not walking in that direction yeah no, not walking things, backwards. um just to finish up i i suffer a little bit from ocd um what really upsets me is that ocd is not alphabetical <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Donna, thank you so much for doing this. Um, thank you for being a full member of our gang. Um, do come to some of the events so that I can introduce you to everybody. Some more of the events. That, yeah, um, we'll be doing another global one on that. I think it's the third Thursday of October, which will be 10 a.m. Los Angeles, 1 p.m. New York and 6 p.m. UK, which is proving quite popular. Um, don't run off, but in the meantime, thank you so much, wherever this appears, There'll be links to you and your work. Um, and it's been a delight. So thank you so much for doing this today. This was really fun. Thank you. So, thank you for giving me practice talking too. <laughs>